Another approach uh, to deal with intractable posterior calculation is to use what is called variational base. Variational base is similar to the idea of uh, Laplace approximation. We want to approximate the posterior. Um, so the idea is that we approximate uh, posterior uh, with uh, some known distribution. And we're going to denote this uh, distribution by Q of uh, theta. And the idea is that we pick your theta, and it comes from the specific family of distributions. You know, an example is is q uh, q of theta is just the product of phi of q i mu i sigma i squared. So let's say we have p parameters in the model, p thetas, and then uh, phi here is just the uh, density of a normal. So essentially, in this case, we assume that the posterior distribution can be approximated by the product of univariate normals. Uh, here we ignore the correlation structure if it exists uh, among the parameters for make the simplification. But the benefit uh, of making this simplification is that everything becomes tractable and calculatable. And this specific example is called mean field inference. When the product of univariate normals is used. Okay, so let's uh, let's look at how we're gonna find this uh, function uh, q of theta, uh, this density of function q of theta. Um, so we want this q to be as close as possible to the posterior, and we're gonna measure this closeness using kublik leibler divergence. Um, so we're going to measure the KL divergence from Q to the posterior, and then we're going to minimize this KL divergence. And the definition of KL divergence is given here. So it measures basically how much uh, Q misrepresents uh, P uh, of theta given Y. So KL measures how much Q misrepresents the posterior, okay? And here we have an example of tautology. So we're trying to minimize something um, and this something actually has P of theta given Y, has the posterior something we don't know and uh, the whole idea of finding Q is to approximate this unknown. Um, but we can get rid, get rid of this posterior in the KL divergence by uh, looking at this expression. So we can write the KL divergence in the following form. And this form can be derived by simply using the Bayes rule. So the uh, posterior Q of theta given Y is just the likelihood uh, times the prior divided by the total probability over the data. So if we take this expression and plug it in here, uh, then what we get is what you see here. And now the nice thing about this part, it does not depend, does not depend uh, on the parameter of the Q. And here we will use uh, Psi. So Psi is parameterization of Q. So this is a set of parameters that describe this uh, density function Q.
Okay, so now let's assume that Q belongs to some known family and it parameterized by parameters uh, theta. And we want to uh, we want to minimize the cubic level of divergence, and instead of minimizing KL divergence, we're actually going to maximize this thing because you know minimizing this one is the same as maximizing uh, maximizing this part. And uh, this specific integral is called the lower bound uh, because it gives you a lower bound on the total probability. But it's it's not it's not very relevant. In any case, so we want to maximize the slower bound, uh, this uh, integral of uh, q of theta times the log of p of theta times p of y given theta divided by q of theta, and we're gonna call uh, this whole function to be uh, h of theta. So what we want to maximize, we want to maximize the integral q of theta h of theta d theta which is equal to this one and um, we can write it down just as an expectation right so if this is a density function and this is just expectation with respect to uh, parameter uh, theta with respect to this density q of h of theta so we have to maximize the expectation and we're going to use uh, gradient descent, the same approach as we, as we did before. And in order to calculate or in order to run the gradient descent optimization algorithm, we need to calculate the gradient. So we need to calculate the gradient of, of this expectation, uh, expectation we take with respect to density Q of H of theta. Again, so theta just follow this uh, Q and Q is parameterized uh, by uh, the Psi and we take, uh, sorry, by the Phi. And we take the gradient with respect to this set of parameters Phi. So we're trying to find the distribution Q, which is as close as possible to the posterior and now instead of solving the uh, integration problem, we have to solve the optimization problem. And the optimization problem is uh, maximize the expectation with respect to, with respect to phi of expectation of age of theta. And expectation is taken with respect to the parameter theta that follows distribution Q. Uh, sorry, it's a little bit off the screen. Here we go. Uh, all right, so that's that's the problem we're trying to solve. We're going to use stochastic gradient descent, so we have to calculate uh, the gradients of those things. And unfortunately, the gradient of the expectation is not the expectation of the gradient, so those things cannot be easily interchanged. And uh, we're going to look at a couple of ways to calculate uh, the gradient. The first one uh, will uh, will rely on what is called the log trick. Uh, it's just a simple uh, definition of the derivative of the logarithm. It is the ratio of the derivative of the function uh, over the function. And now let's say we have uh, some uh, random variable Q that follows this uh, distribution uh, Q uh, parameterized by theta then the derivative of the expectation of h is um, so you remember it's we can change the order of differentiation and integration and then we just use integration by parts inside the integral so it's derivative of q times h minus q times derivative of the log of q and the reason that we write just the log of q here because you remember h uh, is some ratio so it's actually defined uh, here and the top part of this ratio does not really depend on the parameter phi that we're differentiating with respect to so the only bottom part uh, depends on phi so when we take the derivative we can just drop 
uh, the top part completely and then we have one over log of q and then we flip the log and we take the negative sign here so we get we get this expression and uh now now this this part is going to be zero we're going to calculate it a little bit later but uh, in this part we just multiply and divide by uh, q of theta and now if we look at this part of this expression then we see that it's just uh, derivative of the log so we replace this with the derivative of the log so we have a q derivative of the log times h and now we actually have this density q here times some function of theta which is an expectation so we have an expectation of the derivative of the log of q times the function h and since we have an expectation we actually can calculate expectation by doing monte carlo approximation and the only thing that we need to approximate this expectation with monte carlo is we need to be able so you sample uh, from uh, from q of theta and then you calculate uh, derivative with respect to psi of the log of q of theta as long as you can do those two things you can calculate the monte carlo approximation so we can calculate this uh, gradient and then we can just run the gradient descent yet another way is to use what is called reparameterization trick reparameterization trick you represent the q or theta as the deterministic function g which depends on phi your parameters of the key distribution q and epsilon and epsilon is a random variable that does not depend on theta does not depend on phi i apologize okay well an example is let's say your uh theta follows normal distribution centered at mu and sigma squared then you can write uh theta is mu plus uh epsilon uh, sigma squared and epsilon is just normal zero one so you have deterministic function and this deterministic function takes your parameters as inputs and some uh, random variable epsilon and then you get the variable that you're interested in now let's look at uh, the calculation of the gradient so we have our lower bound uh, which is just expectation of a function h uh, and now instead of writing uh, theta we replace it with g of epsilon and phi this is our reparameterization of the random variable theta and the gradient now is uh, again we're gonna uh, switch the gradient and the expectation in this case we can switch the gradient and expectation because the expectation uh, is taken over variable epsilon and epsilon does not depend on the phi the primary with which we differentiate so in this case this this interchange uh, can happen and then under the expectation we basically have a composite function we use the chain rule to calculate it so it's a derivative of g times the derivative of h uh, plus the derivative of h and the derivative of h itself our expectation of this derivative uh, equals to zero so it's easy to check we have expectation over nabla over gradient of h which is negative expectation of a gradient over log of q because you remember h is just a ratio of something on the top that does not depend on phi so we can trap it so we just get the negative log of q and then the this one equals to zero again the way we verify it so we have expectation of the gradient of the log of q we're going to use again the kernel uh, the log trick we're going to replace the gradient of log of q with the ratio of the gradient of q and the q itself 
and then I'm going to write down expectation as an integral, integral of q times the function with which we take the expectation. And uh, so this one cancels out and we change the order of integration and differentiation. So we have the derivative of q and q is the density function. So it integrates to one and the derivative of one is just zero. So means we can take and remove this part. This part is just zero. So the final formula is the derivative of a lower bound is just x oh, the expectation over the derivative of g transpose times the derivative of h. And again, we can approximate it using Monte Carlo approximation.